Salut tout le monde, je m'appelle Shmi, bienvenue à Paris. Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today in beautiful Paris, France for a bit of car spotting. Now I know exactly where to head to find two incredible hypercars. We are talking two cars in extraordinary liveries. We're going to be checking those out and plenty more as we car spot in the capital city of France. Now you might be able to just about catch a glimpse over there of a Porsche 911 2.7 RS just actually departing. There are quite a few of those around for reasons that will become clear a little bit later on. Plus, no doubt plenty more. It's been a while since I came car spotting here in Paris, but I expect to find some really quite nice stuff. Let's go out and see what we can find car spotting here. Very special cars celebrating their 50th anniversary, in fact. 2.7 RS launched back in 1972. They made about 1,500 of them. Built for motorsport, but road legal, of course. Road car. Sounds amazing. Looks incredible. The first Porsche supercar, really. The first ever Porsche supercar. The beginning of the lineage that is also the Carrera GT, the 918 Spyder. But that's kind of where it began. It starts well. There's a Maserati MC20 just over there. Maserati's new supercar. Sorry, lost it behind the... Uh, the minivans just went on down the road there with the Netuno V6 engine. That is a full Mansori, I think, Cullinan from the USA. California plates on the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Carrera RSs everywhere you look. A pair just there and even a third one tucked in around the corner waiting for the lights to change as part of these events going on with those cars here. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Unsurprisingly, it is really very, very busy here. This is one of the more upscale neighborhoods in Paris. And in fact, there's quite a fun story. If we rewind back to one of the first ever vlogs I filmed on the Shmi on 50 channel, it was the adventures in the Schmimobile, driving from London, with the first stop being here in Paris, all the way to the south of France in my V8 Vantage Roadster. And in fact, on that tour, over a decade ago, the Aston was parked just down there, which is really quite fun. Anyway, Paris has a lot of nice hotels. We're actually not too far from the Louvre, the famous art gallery, which is just the other side of the railings here. So we're gonna go and see what we can find because a lot of people are descending upon Paris at the moment, cars from the Middle East, of course, lots of nice cars here to begin with. But one nice car that happens to be here at the moment as well is my friend Sam, seen through glass. He's over in Paris with his Ferrari 360 Modena. And we're gonna hop on board with Sam for a bit of car spotting from the Ferrari a little bit later. So that should be quite fun as well. Anyway, we're not too far right now from the two cars in particular that I want to go and show you. Hey look, found the MC20 again. Actually sounds pretty good. Quite growly for the V6. I can see the cars up here that I've been walking over to find. Let's get a little closer and go through them in detail. Normally, of course, all attention is on a 992 Turbo S convertible, but today, all attention is on this pair. The Bugatti Chiron Zebra, it's a Chiron Sport, and the Porsche 918 Spyder Visac package, both with their crazy, crazy designs. This is actually painted. This car is painted and reminds me of the original Veyron Law Blanc, which I actually filmed here in Paris as it happened. I'd driven over one night and spotted it. This is one of the 500 Chirons. It's a Chiron Sport, which meant with the slight upgrades, the sky view with the dual glass panels on the roof, and then this paint job, the gloss black with the Atlantic blue, which almost represents the airflow form over the car. You've got the one of one Z badging on the side, and come and have a look at the plate at the back. Yes, it wears a plate that literally says Zebra, or Zebra, because it's from California, over from the US. So we've got the eight liter Quad Turbo W16, 1,500 horsepower, the interior to match, and in fact, look at the details as well on the side bolsters of the seat. That Tiffany blue, Altani blue style color that you have throughout the interior and the exterior of the all-wheel drive Bugatti Chiron and the way it wraps around those headlights as well. The aggressive lines, the unusual shapes and curves. And then of course alongside that happens to be the Porsche 918 Spyder Visac, one of 918 with a livery reminiscent of the Salzburg livery in some ways in the red over the top of the white paint with HRE wheels, with the Michelin tyre writing on the tyres as well. And being the Visac package, you've got the additional carbon blades, you've got the full carbon rear spoiler that's raised, the carbon two-piece Targa roof panel, 
carbon wrap around there at the lower side of the front windshield. I say it's a Vysac, but normally on a Vysac, the A-pillar would be carbon. Not entirely sure at this stage. That could be wrapped. I think it's painted. This is where I always take a closer look. Um, perhaps a different option. Not entirely sure which it is exactly. It always says back here, 918 Spider, number 166 of those 918 cars with the V8 and those exhaust tailpipes right on the back that you hear phenomenally loudly if you've taken off the roof panels. But a pretty crazy design again with this air form almost sculpting around the bodywork. Clearly the owner of these two also from California, QP918. Clearly a big fan of crazy designs, crazy appearances and things looking wild. I really like the matched blue covers for the engine back there. Oh, you've got the sound of a uh, unmarked police coming past at the moment in the craziness that is here in Place de la Concorde. Look around. What a stunning view, what a stunning place to be. And then those two, those two to top off a spotting day. I don't think I'm going to be able to beat that today, but I sure will try. You never know what we're going to find a little bit later on. For the time being, that's a pretty good way to begin. I've been so distracted looking at those two that I almost hadn't noticed the Rolls-Royce Cullinan right alongside, again, a Mansouri Cullinan, also from California, part of the same collection, which also includes another Chiron that I believe is somewhere in Paris. Now, it's not every day you don't notice a Cullinan, especially with a grill as big as that, but all eyes on those two anyway. Alongside that is a Mercedes Maybach. Big fan of a Maybach S-Class. Not a bad little lineup to spot here in Paris, hey? When you're waiting for one Ferrari and another drives by, there's a Ferrari FF over there in silver. Always enjoyed mine back when I owned it. Looks very, very smart. Um, but there should be a 360 arriving from somewhere that away in a moment also. So let's wait and see. Target sighted over that way, but behind the obelisk. Somewhere coming around over there is gonna be a red Ferrari 360. <laughs> Mark my words. I promise I saw it. I can't see it now. No idea where he's gone. But something. Oh, look, there's the FF. Family car loaded up. Okay, the flash of red is a little bit more prominent now. Sam's 360 here in Paris. Very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> You're being subtle. I'm so not subtle. As no, subtle no, as you can no, be. No, that wasn't me. making that noise? All right, let's climb in. Do you know why I'm doubly excited about this? Go on. First time ever in your 360. No, it's not. It is. You've owned it for five years, right? Yeah, absolutely. I was convinced at some point you would have come in it. Nope, never. Oh, well, welcome. That's, <laughs> I'm excited to have you. I'm super excited, so... Uh, yeah, you were excited until you realised you have to put the harnesses on. Yes, now I've got to, like, with <laughs> a camera in my hand. Can, this is a very good table that I often yeah? use for my laptop and for oh, my camera. Oh, it's completely perfect for how the purpose. How good is that, right? Nice, Look that works. That. Now yeah. I've got to struggle away at this a little bit. <laughs> so I can't even remember who was the last thing in that Somebody smaller than me. Yeah, if it was my wife, you're in trouble, so... <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. I honestly didn't know. I'm not sure Paris is the best place for you to first experience <laughs> this car. <laughs> I guess Do you know where I'm going to take you? No. Do you know what the second problem is? Because I've done up harnesses, now I've got to reach the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are a bit loose. I, this, I get told off, a lot of my, my audience give me a hard time for You've done this, this before. Slack. But, uh, yeah. Well, um, I think we should head that way. Okay. To the Champs-Élysées. Sure. Do you know what's at the top of the Champs-Élysées? No. Arc de Triomphe. Oh, wow, well, okay. Geographically, I do. I thought maybe you had a better surprise. No, no, no. What are you thinking? Etoile roundabout? Yeah. But let's go. Okay, see. Have you seen those? What are those? The Chiron and the 918. <gasps> Oh my god. Oh, that's the zebra one. Yeah. I'd seen it on Instagram. I actually hadn't seen it. And what's bad is they've been here about a month and I was here two weeks ago. Didn't bother to come and look. So didn't even see them. I'm a crap spotter. Oh well. Like, now yeah. wish me luck because I've got to navigate <laughs> in traffic across four lanes. Thanks for this tip. So you know what? I know what we should do. Clear. Let's go the really complicated way. Let's go to the hardest place to drive merci, a car. Merci. I'll just say thank you. I'll just hold my hand up and say thank you. Sir. <laughs> All right, hello. <laughs> hello, hello, fruity fruity. Oh, well, you know, I just like to make a little bit of a noise because I'm a hooligan and, you know, I'm a cliched Ferrari owner. So, so well, the doubly fun thing about this, we're going to go right, right here. here yeah. The doubly fun thing, I keep saying doubly everything, is that less than 48 hours ago from the point of which we're filming this, we were actually in Italy together with this car. <laughs> I didn't know whether you wanted to reveal that. It's like, oh, Tim, what Maybe. a surprise seeing you here. Yeah, well, that, that hasn't been fully disclosed yet. We'll keep it secret for the time being. For but sure. um, okay. But, yeah. 
Here so, well, welcome. Let me put my window up so uh, we're less disturbed by the Parisian okay. traffic. T um, talk to me about your Ferrari 360 mod now. Yes, owned it for fi five years now, uh, five incredible years. I had a dream that I owned a manual 360 Challenge Renard. Realised they didn't make those, so went, I'll buy a 360 Modena with a manual gearbox instead. Yep. Um, but I wanted one like this, fully spec'd out, carbon seats, harnesses, roll cage, fire extinguisher, all of that's from the factory. Uh, and then over the last five years, I've just done what I'd call OEM Plus tweaks. So it's a legit Challenge for Dali exhaust. Uh, we run 360 Challenge ECU. So okay. the red line is no longer 8,500 RPM, it's 9,250 RPM. Oh. Uh, which is fruity. And we yeah. pump a lot of gas to the exhaust. Like, if we really go on, you'd hear it's a lot of stuff going on back there. Okay. Um, and then, uh, the end of last year, I did sort of interior resto, so any... Sticky buttons. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know about that instead of fries. So all of these were replaced, which was inordinately expensive. Like, yeah, because you have to like, replace whole things. Terrifyingly expensive. Um, and yes, I mean, 51 and a half thousand miles. I'm not sure if you'll get the exclusive of that on me because I don't know what my video is going live, but that was a big goal for me this year to break 50,000 miles. What was it when you bought it? 24. Wow, you've so, more than doubled it. I've more than doubled it. You know, so, it's not much in the life of the car, 20 years old. No, no, but what I like about that is more than half of this car's driving was you. Literally It's that. now more yours than anybody before you. Thank you very much. It's done a half of its mileage in a quarter of its life. Perfect, yeah. as it should be. <laughs> and I'm going to point out at this stage that we are now on the Champs-Élysées driving past all these lovely buildings with the Arc de Triomphe up in front of us. It's, I mean, what I love about driving in Paris, as terrifying as it is, you just have these incredible views surrounding you. So everything is super picturesque. And you know me, I love everything that kind of looks Yeah, yeah. you put like the camera and film the trees yeah, around you, the cobbled slow, streets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's all it's all there, yeah, yeah. The only like, thing which is a bit disappointing is that's an English Audi up there, which is kind of ruining the whole French vibe. But, you know, <laughs> How dare these Brits be in Paris? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> what are they doing here? Sometimes you see fruity cars up here, though, speaking of British Audi. So I, I, when I was last here, I saw Cullinan, uh, GT3 Touring, uh, a few bits and bobs. It's, it's a good spotting location. I'm sure you've haunted this yeah. road many times before. O over the years, up this way, I have filmed Koenigseggs, Pagani's, Bugatti's, you name it. Oh. And the fun thing for me about going to see the Zebra just now yeah. was that... <laughs> oh, he's, he's, raced, he's launched me. He's he, absolutely launched he's me. Oh, the bus is... The bus, is <laughs> bus man's got the camera. <laughs> You're like, camera's out, gotta make some noise. Yeah, yeah. I'm literally an idiot. I'm a six year old in a Ferrari. I'm like, ah, this is so fun. Go, oh, God, it's mine. Is everything all right? Yeah, English Audi Q2. No, where are we gonna go after we go around La Toile? Yeah. To Avenue Georges Sank. Down there is where I first ever saw the Veyron Law Blanc. Oh, and the Law Blanc was the paint scheme that came before the Zebra, obviously. Oh, so you're tying this yeah, together. Yeah, it's a nice little here. story. Yeah, I see what you're doing here. It's all about the stories. I'm not we, certain we'll see any Koenigseggs today, but... No, I, it, it feels pretty quiet. I've seen a couple of Ferraris, MC20, a couple of little cars, obviously quite a few GT3, not GT3, sorry, 2.7 RSs. It's so got to get the right enough. Porsche. Yeah. But we can talk GT3s because you've got a 992 GT3 on the way. I do, quite unbelievably. Lucky boy. <laughs> it's, I'm very lucky. I mean, supposedly it's going into build any day now. So uh, I officially, I guess what, confirmed or put my order on. And if March was when I put the deposit in, and June was when I locked my spec. Mm -hmm. So it feels like a long time. You're used to long waits. This is the first time I've ever ordered a car new from factory. Really? Ever. Your first ever brand new car? Ever brand new car, GT3. GT3. <laughs> Baller. Ridiculous, right? So uh, I'm not my used back. to these waits. Sorry. Oh, they're, no, they're, so, they're everywhere. They're everywhere and I'm obsessed. I've never wanted my back so much until I just spent the last two days in Paris. Yeah, I mean, while I was standing there waiting for you, I stopped filming them because they just go past every five seconds. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. Have you talked about the spec of your GT3? Um, what have the, I? I don't want you to reveal too much. It yeah. is a paint-to-sample slot, which means a lot to people within the Porsche community. If you're not into Porsches, you probably won't know what that means, and it doesn't matter. Uh, custom color. Yeah, custom color. From within a palette, though, it's a bit of a yeah. scam. They now do PTS Plus, so if you really want any colour, you have to pay another 10 grand and wait another nine months. Yeah, so, it's a really, yeah, bit it's a funny though. system. So, I'm not, I'm not sure, oh, it's, it's a wing car, it's not a touring. That's, I think, okay. all I might have revealed for now. You haven't spoken about Gearbox? I don't, oh, I think I have. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's manual. <laughs> Good. So no, it's it's manu yeah, it's manual. It's manual, manual. wing car. I, I like a wing GT3. To me, a, um, yeah, people walk past, they're all like, ooh, Ferrari. Yes, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like a wing GT3. I feel like that's how the GT3 was made. That's how it should be. 
and obviously you can't go wrong with one of these kind of things. I, I just like to be really engaged with the driving, as amazing as PDK is, it means this kind of driving, I feel very detracted from the car, and I always want to be involved, even if I'm doing yeah. 20 miles an hour, so that, that's why I like the manual, it's, it's engaging no matter what speed you're doing, where I felt the PDK car is all about just thrashing it, which is great on occasion. But... Ferrari and Lambo. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, lads! California tea and a hurricane spider. The rental cars. Ferrari crew. Oh, they're rental cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can rent your car for 89 euros for half an hour or something. It counts. Oh, it's probably not even half an hour. It I don't know. Um, Have you been yeah. to the Peninsula Hotel? Because last time I was here, they had two Chirons outside. Ooh. You want to swing Ooh. by there after? Oh, maybe. Cheeky. Here we go then. Everyone getting their photos. You have priority, Help you have priority. Oh, there's a gap, there's a gap. Oh, there's a gap, go. Oh, he's going. He's got to wait for you. Oh, that was awful. Oh, look, there's literally debris from previous accidents. What are we doing here? Well, this is where it's, at, it's actually in your favour right now. Because you have to give priority to people entering, but no one's entering. And it's pretty quiet right now. We're doing well. I'm just, gonna, I'm is, just hugging the inside. I like how that guy's just like, I'm going to park right here. <laughs> In it's the so middle. Casual. Great <laughs> photo moment. All the influences around. Yeah. But well, hold on, it's it's pretty special. It's amazing. And this is what I was saying, like, come to Paris and you just look out a window and you see there, there's the top of the Eiffel Towers over there, you can't quite see it there, it's covered by trees, but everywhere you look, something beautiful. Now we've got to try and make our way to the outside. I've never seen this place so empty. Hey, that's fun <laughs> over there. Oh, it's long. Yeah, right, all the TCPs. Uh, where the, the big buses. Okay. That way. I mean have you actually just gone all the way around without anybody joining in front of you? That was so chill. You are, a, like you are so an Arc de Triomphe L'Etoile Pro. Yeah, mate, you know, me and just... Showing the, showing the world how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> just panicking and... <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed, that was too easy. <laughs> you want to like, go again? Well, no, it would probably no, be no, the no, same. No. Definitely not. <laughs> Let's head this way and go towards prime car spotting territory and see what's about. This is where I have been a very amateur YouTuber. I say amateur YouTuber, I'm gonna blame equipment right now because <laughs> your microphone had definitely turned itself off. You tried to blame me for a second. You did like, say, oh, I think you this. turned it off. And I was like, no, hold no, on no, a no, second. No, 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 I know I asked you the other way around. I said, did you turn it on? <laughs> Meaning, could that have turned it off? But no, it was on and then it was off. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully we've been able to fix it. Anyway, this is Avenue Georges Sank. And hey, look what's on the left. My back? Yeah, my What back. a beast, <laughs> looks fantastic. I mean, really, I'm a big fan. Can we yeah. peek anything through the Four uh, Seasons? That Stelvio Quadrifoglio, was it? I mean, yeah, George. Hoping for something a bit more exciting than that. Oh, there's a nice. What is that? Door, a black badge door. Yeah, and a my back next to it. <laughs> <laughs> like no, no Sur joke. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how many my backs are here? I wonder why that is. Are they okay? I'm going to ask something really stupid now, and you can correct me. Are the new my backs hybrid? No. Okay. You can edit that bit down. <laughs> but <laughs> no, <laughs> because like, what's the incentive for the French I have people? No idea. New car taxes, maybe there's an incentive. There are massive taxes here now. They've introduced huge new car registration taxes. Um, but why does everybody have my backs over 7 Series, A8s, or you know, even ghosts? In London, you'd be seeing a ton of ghosts. Of course. There. there are just huge numbers of S classes in general, you know, new S classes to a penny around here. Um, there's a, oh, there's a Bentley of sorts. Yeah, a flying spur or something up there. Yeah, I think that's a red flying spur up there. It's a British one, actually. Uh, Conti GT convertible behind the Dawn. Oh, it's a Mansori Dawn. Wraith Dawn. Sorry, Dawn. Yeah. Dawn, Dawn. <laughs> I, I, was making, I was making the same mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was Mansori. I've seen a few Mansori cars around. Yeah, normally there's, there's like nice random stuff parked up down here. I think it's very off-season, which is surprising because it's just been Paris Fashion Week, where I would have assumed People would have wanted to hang around and be in Paris, but it's felt pretty quiet. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you to the peninsula because I say I just last time I was here was good, and I'm hoping maybe it's still good. Somewhere over there is a yellow R8 Spider. It's a nice colour, isn't it? Is that like satin yellow? That must be a satin vine. Some kind of wrap, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know actually. I don't know. Anyway, it's cool. It's an R8. There are so many traffic lights here. It takes forever to get anywhere. <laughs> I'm watching my engine temps very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> 20 year old Ferrari. In but Paris. does this car does this car have problems with that or is no, it okay? I, I've been so lucky. I say lucky. I've spent a lot of time with AV Engineering who maintained the car, making sure that it's meticulously well looked after. Yeah. Um, worth it though. But yeah, it's been worth it. It means whenever I want I can get in and do a big five thousand mile trip and not have to worry about it. 
just go drive to the next traffic light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that money just to roll forward to 20 meters. It's just be like that. traffic light. What an traffic experience! Like, when in Paris, a little Alpine A110? They are popular here. I do see more Alpines in France than anywhere else, which is quite nice. And a competitor, Cayman. But you see loads of Alpines because the roads are tiny. You need a nice little small car, and especially now with taxes and stuff, why not? But I think the French are also proud of their manufacturers, which is great. I think it's, I, I like it. It's I mean, cool. that is concluded as a Renault comes towards us, and we were talking earlier about Citroëns. Yeah, it's very they're true. apparently proud of French cars, yeah. and Maybachs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they think Maybach is French. This video is now spotting Maybachs in Paris. <laughs> hey, it's cool, I like them. Look! Yes! <laughs> what a spec! That was an extended wheelbase one. Yes, oh, they all extended wheelbase. I, don't know, I should know more about my packs. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up to the peninsula here. This yeah. will either be a complete fail because Paris is just dead for supercars, or I'm going to save your video, Tim. Alpine. Another. Oh yeah, look at that! Well, I've already saved your video. There you go. Two Alpines. Double Alpines. Keep your fingers crossed. It's all about doubles, so I'm expecting a second Chiron. Nope. No, 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 no. Have we just held your anticipation that there was going to be something cool here? I think there was maybe a Rolls Royce. I mean, I don't even know what that is. There's a Mini. It's an old Bentley something. 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 Want, want to get a thumbnail with that? Is it a Continental? No, what is it? It's an 8, a Bentley 8. It's a Bentley 8. 8. Okay. No, no thumbnail? No. S class. <laughs> hey. This is the end of my ride. You've been a very nice Uber. I will give you five stars. Thank you so much. It's been terrifying. <laughs> you have no. survived. Um, Can I just say, yeah. I think there's a Boxster Spider coming on the left. I hope you called that correctly. I really hope I have as well. I'm determined to it. make a great Wait spotting for video it. for you. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yes, what a lad. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> good call, so good call. All right, thanks, Sam. Thank you. Love the car. Good Enjoyed to see you. That. Right, let me hop out. Be and, safe. Uh, Check a million times from yeah, my back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Quick little run out with Sam. Wait for the noise. <laughs> that is a sharp sounding V8. Well, that pretty much brings us back full circle to the lineup of 911 Carrera RS 2.7s we have behind us because today was in fact the 50th anniversary of the introduction of this car to Paris Motor Show five decades ago. Hence, there's been a bit of an event with quite a few of them around. I think maybe 15, 16 cars or so in total, which is really quite surreal to see. But today we've seen a bunch of cars around. We've been to see the Zebra Chiron Sport and the 918 Spider from the USA over here. And I'll be very shortly with my car from, well, the UK, but over here in Europe, over in the USA before long as well. And of course, we've caught up with Sam with his 360. I can't believe that's the first time we've actually filmed something together with that car. That's kind of crazy to think about, given he's owned it for five years already. Just as these all set off and depart together, that's pretty special to see. A mixture of tourings and lightweights from various different countries. They're really cool anyway. There's plenty more on Sam's channel about the work that he's done with his 360 Modena. I'm sure there'll be more in the future as well. So do check that out if you'd like to find out more. Big thanks to him for being the Uber driver of the day here in Paris. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I appreciate your support an awful lot. And it won't be long now until I'm in the USA for the GT Black Series Tour. That's it for this time. I'll see you soon. Cheers.